Hey, what's up YouTube? Uh, just making a new video as promised. Uh, I got my new item that I was super excited about and I'm currently using it. You're watching me on it right now. So the question is what was that and uh, why did I do it? So as I've been using the Fujifilm X-T1, I've definitely been loving it as you guys know, but I have had some issues with shooting video on it. Um, and so that's why I needed a solution. The question was, how, how can I solve this issue? Do I need to buy a newer body? So the biggest reason that I can come up with to upgrade the Fujifilm X-T1 to a newer body is for the increased video quality. Now I'm hoping we're getting it right here. Um, this seems to be true across the entire lineup. Doesn't matter if you're buying a low-end camera or a high-end camera, the newer bodies do better with video. It's just the way it's always been. Video has been uh, something that has been added to DSLRs for the last oh, 10 or 15 years, and as they're doing it, they're getting better and better and better, and the same is true for the mirrorless. Um, obviously not as long of time frame, but it just keeps getting better and better. So, the five-year-old body of the X-T1 just doesn't have the video quality that I was looking for when it comes to tracking focus. A lot of my videos you'll see the camera try to take focus behind me and then take my face and then behind me. During the video it's just back and forth and that's very annoying so I'm hoping that we can get past that with this solution. So, um, you know, autofocus has improved over time. Uh, overall image quality, slow motion video, 4K video, uh, those are the most obvious advancements that have been made. And 4K would be really nice to be able to use, for, but for those of us on a serious budget, it might just not be within our price range. Um, and that's the case for me. I just really couldn't find a good 4K fam, uh, sorry, a good 4K camera that I wanted to spend the money on. They were they were just too expensive and I keep thinking in a couple of years they'll be very uh, reasonably priced and so I'm just gonna wait for that. Uh, many of you will probably do the same thing if you're looking at uh, photography the way that I look at photography. So um, I am seeing some weird movement in the video with my camera sitting perfectly still hmm, that's unusual um, not sure how that could be moving but interesting we'll figure that out in a minute sorry for the sidetrack there I just noticed it on the screen um, so it would be nice but it might be out of our price range so what I came up with that looks like the answer for me is a 2008 body uh, I'm not going to tell you the name of it just yet, but it, I'm sorry, 2018, not 2008. <laughs> I'm getting all screwed up today. Um, so it's a much newer body than the X-T1. It's only a year old instead of five years old, and the pricing on it is just great. Um, so let's see, why did it catch my attention and push me to the point of buying one? Uh, price, quality, capabilities, and size. It is a tiny, tiny little camera. Were there other cameras that I looked at while I was considering this one? Absolutely, and I even looked at other brands. I'm not a fanboy. I don't get stuck with one brand and just say that's the only thing I can use. But there are caveats to switching to a new brand, which means buying new lenses that aren't going to work on your other bodies. Um, just cross capability, you lose. So. I did want to stay with Fuji, but I took a good look at the Sony 5100. It had a lot of the options that I needed, but it also is about a four or five year old body. So I was a little concerned that the technology just might not be up to date. Um, pricing on a used 5100, you can find them for about $250, $260, not too bad. Um, and they have almost everything, but there was one caveat that it did not have that without, I just couldn't use it. And that was an external microphone input jack. There was no way to use an external microphone with it. So your only option was to buy an external audio recorder. Now that's another $100 minimum to get a good one. Um, you know, that would be a Zoom uh, N1 or H1, something like that. 
um, they're about $119. So you got to add that to the price of the camera just to be able to shoot the video and get good audio. Um, so that kind of knocked it out of the ballpark for me. Um, so with the need for uh, an external microphone input, with the need for 1080p good quality video with really good quality um, focus tracking, face tracking, all of those types of things, uh, I settled on one camera and I found it. I ordered it and received it today and you're watching on it. It is the Fujifilm X-A5. Awesome little camera. I'm really pleased with it. So, let's see. I've got it in my hands for the first time. I never even felt one before I purchased the thing. I purchased it used. So, we'll get into that in just a second. I'll tell you where I purchased it and why. Um, but, I got a really good deal on it that made it a much cheaper option than selling my X-T1 and moving up to an X-T20 or an X-T3 uh, or an X-T2 or an X-H1. Uh, all those options would be awesome options and they would all include 4K but they would all cost more money. The X-T20 wouldn't include 4K I don't think. Maybe it does. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Um, so don't quote me on that. But the X-T20 was the closest. I probably could have sold my Fujifilm X-T1 and been very close to buying a used X-T20. But I just loved the form factor of the X-T1. I didn't want to get rid of it. I love the images it produces. So the next best, best option was just to get a secondary, a second body. Um, and most people love having a second body when they're shooting because it gives you the ability to have multiple lenses ready to go um, you know, for different scenarios, different circumstances, or to be able to set up one camera to shoot video while you're shooting images or to be able to set one camera up while you're doing some night photography and have the other one in your hand to catch things that catch your eye while you're shooting those long exposure shots. Um, there's a lot of good reasons to have a second body, so I was happy to do it. Um, let's see, so the X-A5's got the mic input, the forward-facing screen, which is really nice. I'm able to see myself now and know that I'm in focus, which is just, it's, it's amazing. It's really nice. I haven't tested it to see if I can do live view with the HDMI out yet, which I can't do on the X-T1. I'm hoping I'll be able to with this, but if not, even having the little screen is much, much better than not being able to see yourself at all. Um, so it is a newer body with newer tech and a newer processor that should make it better for make it better as a video camera. Um, but time and testing will tell the truth of the matter. So that's what we do here. Uh, we want to find the truth. We want to figure out if this is as good as I think it's going to be. So I'm going to use it a lot. I'm going to use it mostly for video. Um, I'll be testing the camera as a video camera and I'm sure I'll use it for some street shooting as well as some other types of photography like landscape and portraiture just to kind of test the overall abilities of this camera and I'll definitely be posting up uh, images and letting you guys know and videos like this one you'll see what it can actually do. Um, it's still really weird that when I move the screen moves. That must have something to do with the uh, optical stabilization because the camera is not moving. So maybe the optical stabilization needs to be turned off. Actually, it does when it's on a tripod. Let me do that real quick. I'm going to try to take care of this. I'll be right back. Okay, I turned it off on the lens, but it's still doing that. I'm sure you can see it. It's just moving around like crazy. So it must be the stabilization setting inside the camera that allows you to use the optical stabilization on the lens. I'll shut that off on my next video, but for this one I'm just going to leave it the way it's going. Hopefully it's not driving you guys nuts. Um, so now that we've gone over, you know, what I, why I purchased the camera, let's talk a little bit about the camera itself, the quality of materials. Uh, every video I've talked about, they talk about how it's just kind of a cheap plastic camera does not feel that way to me. It feels very nice in my hands. Uh, it's got some good weight to it. It's not ultra light, but it's pretty darn lightweight. Um, it's definitely lighter than my X-T1 because it is a plastic uh, body. It's not the magnesium body that the X-T1 is. Um, and it's not weather sealed, so it doesn't have the dust and water protection that you would get from the professional bodies. just means you need to be slightly more care careful with it. I mean, if you watch people like uh, uh, Theoria, uh, he'll tell you that the weather sealing makes no difference whatsoever. 
Now, unlike him, I am, I've never been a camera repair guy, so I've never been inside these bodies, and I haven't seen what he's talking about, but he has, and he's pretty serious about it, so you might go check out some of his videos and see what he has to say. It's Theora, Theoria Apophysis, uh, or Apophysis, or something like that. <laughs> so look him up, see what you can find. Real interesting fellow. As far as the specs go from this for this camera, uh, it's the Fujifilm XA5. It's a 24.2 million megapixel or million pixel, 24.2 megapixel, um, which is great. It's got a lot more ability for cropping if I need that than my XT1 does, which is only a 16 megapixel. Now I say only, but I've done videos about how megapixel count does not really give you the advantages that you think it might. It's not as big a deal as people make it out to be, at least for the way that I shoot. Um, so it's got a single SD court, uh, card slot. Um, it can only use the UHS-1 cards. It can't use the USH-2 cards. Maybe they'll update that. I don't know if they'll be able to. That might be a hardware issue. Um, I'm just not quite sure. So as far as the video quality goes on it, it's capable of doing 1080p up to 120 frames per second for slow motion, 60 frames per second, uh, 24 frames per second. I believe I'm shooting in 24 frames per second right now, which is kind of the cinematic setting. Uh, we'll see how that comes out. Um, it's also capable of doing 4K, but it's only 15 frames per second, which is pretty much useless. It's basically an 8 megapixel burst shooting is what it's for. Um, now, in that 4K mode, that 8 megapixel mode, it also has focus stacking, which is actually a really cool thing to be able to do. If you're unfamiliar with that, I will be doing some videos in the future about focus stacking. So keep your eye out for that. It is a pretty interesting uh, feature to have on there. That's not available on the X-T1, and it's pretty cool. Um, and in that, uh, it, has, it also has a 4K time lapse, which is 30 frames per second. I don't quite understand that yet. Um, it's a 30p time lapse. Um, so I'm not sure why it doesn't have 30p for regular 4K if it can do it in a time lapse. But maybe they'll upgrade the, uh, the firmware on this and you'll be able to in the future. And maybe they can't because of overheating issues. I just don't know. So we'll have to see in the future. It does use the Fujifilm X mount for the lenses, which means all of your Fujifilm lenses are going to work on it, um, and all of your aftermarket X mounts lenses are going to work on it. Uh, so that's great for me because I have those lenses for my X-T1. means there's not a lot of extra cost to get this camera up and running. Um, as far as the ISO sensitivity goes, it goes up to 12,800 as standard ISO. Um, but from what I'm reading and hearing, uh, 6400 is about as high as you want to use for usable images, and even those are going to be slightly questionable. Um, it does have five steps of exposure compensation, which is pretty cool. My X-T1 only has three, uh, so that's pretty good. Um, it does have face detection and eye detection. I am using the face detection in this video right now. So far, every time I look up, I'm in focus, so it seems to be working pretty good. Um, it's got a focal plane shutter, it's got six frames per second continuous shooting, auto bracketing like most cameras. Uh, the focus modes uh, seem to work just fine and they're fairly quick because it's using the new processor. And I believe it's using, um, yeah, it has phase detection uh, for the autofocus, which the X-A3 did not have. And that's a pretty big upgrade for focus speed on this camera. Um, now, I haven't tested it out much. I'm just going by what I've seen in other videos. I will be testing all that stuff out and letting you know my personal opinion on that. Um, it does have a little pop-up flash that you can kind of bend back and turn it into a bounce flash. It's, it's a cool little option, uh, but most people are not going to use anything like that for serious photography. They're going to buy an external uh, flash and put it on the hot shoe. Uh, the biggest issue that people have with this when they're trying to use it in video mode is that the flip-up screen flips up behind the camera, which means if you have a external microphone on here, it does uh, block the screen, so it makes it harder to see what you're doing, uh, harder to frame your shot. So what I'm doing today is I have the microphone plugged into the XA5, but it's sitting on top of 
the XT1 right down here just to give it a stand so that uh, it's not blocking my screen. I do have stands for the microphone, I just don't have any with me here at work. So um, this is the way I'm doing it for today. Seems to be working out just fine. We'll see once I get this video done if the audio turns out okay or not. Um, so yeah, with the movie recording, it says that it's got 4K up to 15 frames per second continuous recording at approximately five minutes. That's pretty unusable for video. It's very jerky. Um, it's just too slow a frame rate, so I would not recommend doing that. But when you get into the full HD, you've got the 1080p at 60 frames per second, all the way down to 24 frames per second, but you also have a high-speed movie mode that gives it to you at 120 frames per second, but it looks like that's only going to run at 720p. So we'll have to test those out, see if the updates, which I just installed the new firmware update 2.0, we'll have to see what those updates are providing and if they're changing any of this stuff I haven't checked yet. Um, but it's got all the advanced features, it's got some really nice uh, uh, film simulations, it doesn't seem to have all of the film simulations, especially not all of the new ones, but uh, it does have some nice ones, I'll go through and test all those out and see what I think. Uh, one big thing for me is it's got a Bluetooth uh, connection instead of just Wi-Fi, which is really nice, it means that I can connect and transfer images and videos to my phone uh, while I'm still connected to the internet. It just makes things a little quicker. Um, so I'm really going to enjoy that. It does use geotagging um, through the Bluetooth. It gets your location, time, and date from your phone and then tags that onto the images. I think that's pretty cool. Um, so that's kind of the base, base uh, stats for this camera, the base reasons why I purchased it. Now, where did I purchase it? Uh, that's kind of the big deal here. I was really excited about what I found. Um, all of the major camera shops have them new in stock, currently with a lens for a very reasonable pricing, around five to six hundred dollars. Um, it's about a hundred dollars more. It's about six hundred dollars for the XT100, and about five hundred dollars for the XA5. The X-T100 and the X-A5 are identical cameras except for the X-T100 has a hump at the top much like the X-T1 uh, where a normal DSLR would have its prism so it's a DSLR shaped camera and it does have an optical viewfinder, an electronic optical viewfinder um, or an electronic viewfinder, it's not optical, sorry. <laughs> Once again I'm having a rough day. Um, so it does have that electronic viewfinder which is not available on the XA5. There is no viewfinder whatsoever. You're just using the back screen. For me that's not an issue with this camera. Um, but for some people it may be so that's something to keep in mind. Um, now I however being a budget photographer that I am uh, found, I found it used on MBP. Uh, MBP is a site that sells used photography equipment. I check it out a lot to see what the used prices are. Now they're going to have higher prices than you could normally find anything on uh, eBay or any of those places, but they grade the quality of the product that you are purchasing and they tell you what the grade is. So the camera that I purchased was graded as good, which is kind of a middle of the road rating. They have like new, uh, uh, excellent, excellent plus, uh, fine, good, uh, poor, uh, they have all these different ratings. So I picked kind of a middle of the road rating where the camera is supposed to have some visible marks, the screen's supposed to have a couple of marks on it, but the sensor's good, uh, the camera itself is working flawlessly. Uh, so I wanted to see what that would look like when I got it in my hands. Would it be pretty beat up or would it look okay? Um, you know, I was very curious. Right now I'm extremely happy. The quality of the camera that came to me, I would rate much higher than just good. Um, so they must be very, very strict about their quality control. Um, and I am very, very happy about that. Uh, what price did I pay for it? Uh, the price was spot on in my opinion. They were asking $239 for this body with no lens. Uh, I'm very happy to pay that price. Um, I would at this point highly recommend them. Now that being said, I do not have any affiliation with MVP. I do not have any affiliation with any uh, store or product. So I pay for all of these products that I'm testing for you out of my pocket. 
Um, and when I check, when I buy something from one of these places and try it out, I let you know truthfully what I think about the quality of the product that they delivered and the quality of their service. In my opinion, so far, MVP has been phenomenal. Um, I would highly recommend them if you are looking for a used camera purchase. I would say you can absolutely trust their their rating on the quality of the product that they're selling, and you can know that you are getting what you're paying for. Um, now, you may pay a little bit of higher price, but having that kind of guarantee or or uh, faith in what you're receiving is worth it to me. Uh, that's a personal decision you'll have to make whether it is for you or not. Um, so all that being said, this is my new video rig. This is what I'm going to be shooting the video on to tell you guys about the X-T1 and what I'll probably be shooting video on to tell you about itself. Uh, I may shoot some video on the X-T1 of this camera so I can hold it up and show it to you and show you the size. Uh, but other than that, most of the video you guys are going to see from here on out will be coming out of this little camera. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, let me know what you think. Did I do a smart thing? Was it stupid to buy this? Should I have just upgraded? Um, you know, let me know what you think. And don't hold back. If you think I'm a dummy, tell me I'm a dummy. <laughs> so there we have it. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure that you subscribe. And as always, the number one thing you can do to help this channel out is hit that like button. That like button puts this video in front of more people so that they can see if it's something they're interested in watching. Uh, and that's what we need. It's just more viewers, more viewers, more viewers, uh, more people to bounce ideas off of and give us uh, questions of things they want to see. Um, it just makes the channel better for everybody. Uh, so once again, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great afternoon.